How's it going guys? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I'm going to show you guys this brand new pond that I have officially and tell you everything I've done to it. I was waiting to do this because I need to get more decorations for it, but I decided, hey, what the heck, I'll just do it now and then I'll do an update video once there's more logs and actual stuff in there that the turtles can climb on. So we're going to go ahead and jump into it and I'll give you all the details on how I created this pond and everything that's in it at the moment. All right, so here is the pond currently. Like I said, there's not a, a lot of decorations in there. I really need to get more. I, I have a log actually picked out I need to cut out and bring up. But um, right now it's it's functional. It's nice for the turtles. All the turtles are doing great. And uh, it honestly, this is one of my favorite enclosures. I don't know why, it's, it's just a nice solid pond. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the actual details. So first, we have the barrier. Here we have, it's all wooden planks. Um, just for you know any kind of future reference for you guys if you need wood for any of your builds One Facebook marketplace two Craigslist. There's always like someone is tearing down a swing set or like a fort that they've made And they always have a ton of boards and stuff available. I got all this stuff for free. So, you know, this is at least I don't even know possibly hundreds of dollars worth of boards and materials that I got for free just because I looked around so how I've built this is, um, I don't know if you can see, here we have fence post, right there, fence posts all the way around, they're buried down probably a foot, foot and a half, so they're very sturdy in there, and then once I had those fence posts set, I just got the boards, and I started stacking them, I just went around the bottom, one, two, three, four, all the way until it was of the height that I wanted. And then I got some of these deck boards, actually, and I made a lip. You can see that. It's a lip from the back of the barrier. And then up, it's about, sticks out about three and a half, maybe four inches or so right here. So the turtles can't get out even if they climbed up, so it's all good. Um, obviously, it backs up to the box turtle pen, so all that was already there. And then it backs up to this enclosure, another little pond that I have. And obviously, all these were already there, so this barrier was already here and then the back, but I had to, to curve it out, as you can see. Um, I have some leftover materials, like some slate, some boards, some lava rock that I had in the, the bio filter over there. Um, but I'll get into that in a minute. So once that was done, um, I was actually originally going to use a pre-made pond liner for this. It's kind of like a bowl, um, but unfortunately we have an underground dog fence. Our dogs are great Pyrenees, so they need to roam. So we have a big fence that runs throughout the entirety of our yard. And that electric fence line actually runs like right through here. So I couldn't cross that fence line um, and I was trying to, I was trying really hard to get that pre-made pond in there, but it wasn't fitting well and it just was not working out the way I was hoping to. So I actually ran to Lowe's and I bought a pond liner, which obviously, as you can see right here, is right there, the pond liner. Um, but before I put the pond liner down, I actually got an old, like, bed comforter and completely lined the hole that I dug before putting the liner down so it's not sitting on just straight dirt. The pond right here is about three and a half to four feet deep. Since it's not very big in like surface area, I wanted to make it deeper. So it's about three and a half to four feet deep here. And then over there, it kind of like, so it's super deep. I don't know if this will make any sense. It's super deep here. It slopes up and it's more shallow. And then around here, there's a deeper part that kind of connects into this. Then it goes up and then it goes like to a lip right here. And I'll actually show you that lip. Move some of the water lettuce away. You can see there's actually a, I don't know if you can tell, there's a yellow belly slider right there. Um, move this water lettuce. You can kind of see that lip and then it dips down. Don't know if you can see that or not. But I did that so the turtles could rest on that lip and just, uh, breathe and not have to swim at all so that was uh pretty much the hole that i dug 
not too fancy. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna be getting some logs to put in here so they can bask on logs and I can take out the, the ZooMed basking platform because it, you know, obviously doesn't look as natural as I would like it to. Um, over here we have a pre-made pond like spillway, if that's what you wanna call it. I had no intentions of making this into like a pond. I just wanted something that I could plant these cattails in, which I actually dug up from a wet spot over there, as you can see all those cattails. Same place I got the cattails from my big pond. Um, so here it is. So this is a little spillway. And actually how I have it built is there's a layer of, how do I have this? It's a layer of um, lava rock, which grows a lot of beneficial bacteria. And then on top of the lava rock, there's some fine, like finer, not pea pebbles, but like pond pebbles. And then it's like dirt and mud. Just a layer, a few inches thick of mud and dirt and everything which is what the cattails are planted in. And then I have about two to three and a half inches of uh, pond pebbles on top of all that to keep all that sediment down there so it doesn't overflow into the pond. And then obviously I have some, some beach pebbles right here that slope out to block some of the, the liner. Then I have some slate that goes all the way around and blocks the, the edges of the pond so it looks more natural. And I have obviously cattails that are growing in there. These smaller ones are fake that I just had in the house, but the bigger ones are real. And as you can see, they're, they're growing pretty well. In the water, we have some water lettuce. And then I used to know the name of these things. I believe they're called like water hyacinth or, or something like that. I'll put it in the, the description below. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the pond. We have a, oh gosh, this was the pump in the big pond. So I think it's like a 1200, 1300 gallon per hour pump. And then we have a UV sterilizer filter right here. External filter. I believe this filters up to 200, and, no, not 200, 2,500 gallons, 2,500 gallons per hour. So that's, it's a, it's a good filter and it works great because this pond is crystal clear. I don't know if you can tell because the water's moving, but you can see how clear the water is. Um, got a little waterfall right there. As you can see, I'll move this. That is the spillway of the pond. It just spills out onto these pieces of slate and then goes into the water. Pretty nice, there's a ton of algae in there, but that's okay. Um, the hose for this actually is like buried down in there and it goes up from the, the river rocks, through the mud, through all the, the pebbles and everything, and then comes out here. That is also filtering a lot of waste and has a ton of beneficial bacteria in there, which is why this pond is so dang clear and it's super clear, it's super clean. Um, not only because of all the aquatic plants, you know, the cattails, the water lettuce, but also because of that beneficial bacteria and because of the UV sterilizer. So this pond here, I should have no trouble keeping crystal clear throughout the years. But um, yeah, honestly, like I said before, this is one of my favorite ponds. It took a while to build. I, for some reason, I waited until the heat of the summer to build it. So I was out here during like 93 degree heat and 85% humidity building this, but it was worth it 100%. Now the turtles that I have in here, I built this specifically for one species of turtle originally, but a few of them have kind of wandered in here just because I needed space for them. So in here right now, we have a largemouth bass. We have two um, bluegill and I believe there's like a feeder goldfish in there. I put them in there for the bass, but I think one of them survived. Um, and then turtles, we have one smaller common snapping turtle, two yellow belly sliders, an African side neck, and then a male Mississippi map turtle. Um, if you're wondering about the snapper, everything is perfectly fine. If you keep turtles well fed and they have a lot of hiding spots, generally they won't be aggressive. Now I've been keeping an eye on it a lot, um, but it's funny because my snapping turtle, I don't know if you can tell, there's some ruts on there. The snapper actually spends a lot of his time out of the pond onto the land. He buries in the land, as does the African side neck. It could just be one of those defense mechanisms. Oh shoot, here's a worm right here. I can throw it in for the fish. Could be one of those, those defense mechanisms um, to get out of the heat. It also could be because there's not a lot of logs or hiding spots in there. But I've had no problems in terms of aggression. Um, yellow belly sliders and the map turtle all bask like every single day all day and the african side neck more than likely 
is gonna be, yeah, he's right here. So this is Max, the African side neck. Here he is, he's a big boy. Go into the pond. Um, the snapper and the side neck, they all go in the pond at nighttime to hunt. And then like, like clockwork every morning, you know, during the day they're buried, so. I don't know exactly what's going on with that, but everything's good. They get fed every single day. On the sliders and the map, they do, they're doing great. They're hiding in there right now. But um, yeah, this is the pond. I have a few pictures of you know the build process, so I'll, obviously I'll be putting that in the video. And yeah, one of my three ponds. This is what I call the medium-sized pond. Then we have the smaller pond. This is a, I think it's a 125 or 150 gallon pond. Got a couple turtles in here. Got a, uh, a spiny soft shell, a pink belly side neck, a pink belly snapper, a common musk, and a Reeves turtle, and a little baby Mississippi map turtle. They're all small turtles in here, so they're not adults at all. They're like, I think the biggest one is the, the soft shell, which is like four inches long. So, uh, but it's super clean, super clear all the time. Then obviously we got the big pond, which has all the bigger turtles in it, which isn't as clear because it gets direct sunlight and there's just more turtles in it. Got some sliders, got some maps. Down back terrapin, there's another, there's a pink belly side neck in there. Um, soft shell, so they're all doing great. It's the big pond. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it. A lot of stuff is overgrown that I need to take care of. It doesn't hurt the turtle, but just in terms of looking at it, it doesn't look the best. I like how overgrown this is because it, you know, I just like the way that this pond looks when everything's overgrown. And uh, this pond still needs some decor around, still needs some landscaping, which I will be doing at some point either this year, if not next year. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll get back to you. There's the pond. And yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Kind of a long video, uh, just kind of a run through. It's basically just a breakdown on how this pond was put together. But like I said, if you have any questions, leave them below. I'll get back with you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.